Welcome back to another Tactical Fly Fisher video. Today is a little bit of a special day. We got some new dudes in the crew. So this is Kramer Bookman. He's our new shop manager. This is Brad Green. He's our new warehouse manager. <laughs> and of course, this is Connor, which this is our last day on the water together, at least as an employee. <laughs> so anyway, we thought we'd go out with a bang. <laughs> Uh, or in with a bang for these guys. Uh, we are at a very special place today, a place that I have been trying to get to for about 10 years, but it is hard to get to for one thing, and it's not near anything. Uh, so you really have to want to get here. We made a nice long drive in this morning, and we have this awesome canyon to explore. Uh, we're gonna go give it a shot. Hopefully it'll turn out well, even if the fishing isn't that great. We got to see a pretty cool place with uh, all sorts of wildlife and wildflowers and wild country this morning. So come along for the ride. Now, as I mentioned in uh, the intro, I have never fished here before. This is a brand new river for me. And that's always an exciting prospect, but often comes with a little bit of a puzzle. You've got to unravel. And one of the main ones for me that goes along with that is taking a temperature. So. It's 60 degrees on the dot. That's a prime temp, pretty much right at the apex of that metabolic curve for trout. So they could be in any part of the river, even the really fast bits in the heavy pocket water or at the heads of runs where it's quite fast. So that's the main thing that uh, the thermometer is gonna tell me um, whether I need to fish in slow water or uh, faster water. And I've written a lot about that in my book, Tactical Fly Fishing, and we've also talked about it in uh, Modern Nymphing Elevated and Adaptive Fly Fishing. But really when the temperatures are good like this, the fish could be everywhere, they'll be spread out. So I've got water in front of me that's, I don't know, maybe crotch deep out there at the deepest. So I've got a two fly nymph rig on for now that I'm gonna start with and then we'll probably try and chuck some dries if we find some fish rising. And I'm gonna just put some scafars on for my cider. And for this water, I'm putting that scafars on about, I did it basically about three feet to my top fly. And then my bottom fly is about another 20 inches below that. So I've got a blowtorch and a paradigon on, let's see how that goes. And on the first cast. <laughs> Looks like it took the paradigon and a little brown trout. All right, I got that first cast fish on the paradigon. Oh, that would be bottom, a little boulder there. So I pretty much went just to the best part of the, the tongue of current coming down from the boulders here for that first cast fish. And there's a deep little slot there that has quite a bit of current to bring fish food, but also some depth to hide them. And that fish took right away. So far, I've got a the Paradigon and the Blowtorch both have 2.8 millimeter beads on, and I am ticking a little more than I want. So I might lighten that Paradigon up here. Whoa, <laughs> I just got crushed. Uh, I might lighten that Paradigon up so I avoid ticking the bottom quite as much. Now. As I said, I've never fished this river before, so I don't really know how many fish are here, but there's another little rainbow. I did dig up one fisheries report on the river from back around 2005, and that's the only one I could find. See you later, little rainbow. And there's only about 600 fish per mile. So I don't think the density of fish is gonna be super high in here, which tells me it's probably not much point in 
repeatedly fishing a spot forever after you've caught a fish or two out of it. But we'll, uh, I always like to give it a go in some prime spots first for a bit before I decide whether it's time to, to move on. But having caught two fish out of the spot already, I probably won't fish her too much longer before I make a move. Uh, before I, I just left that first spot, before I go too much further, we're gonna see if there's fish in this really fast pocket water, and apparently there are. <laughs> Although it was kind of in the slower back end of it, but I switched, went to a, a 2.3 millimeter bead Paragon on the dropper, and I still have that 2.8 blowtorch on the point, but I actually just took the caddis case, a little brown trout there. Just took the caddis case still on that blowtorch, even with the lighter uh, Paragon. So I do have still enough weight. If I keep ticking bottom in some of the shallower water here, I'll pull off that second fly, go to a single fly, and maybe also move that scafars down the leader a little bit. All right, Brad told me there was a fish that rose behind me while I was fishing in the middle of the river over here in this little cut. It's probably not a, a large fish, but we'll see if I can... Yeah, there it is. <laughs> uh, spunky rainbow. On the Paragon again. So, out of the four fish I've landed so far, three have come on that dropper fly, which shows you they're willing to come up through the current. Um, pretty typical of good water temperatures. <laughs> I was standing pretty much over that fish beforehand and it didn't spook. So uh, I guess having drab clothing and it not being a real sunny day is a benefit so far. Oh, there you go. Nice. Brad comes from New York, where his focus has been on streamers and muskies and Great Lakes fish, things like that. This is his first time ever Euro nymphing, so we will see how it goes. There you go, fish on. <laughs> and Brad has his first Euro nymphed fish on the line. A little brown trout that uh, flipped away. So stop your rod a lot higher on the cast. Try and stop it at eye level. Okay. If you stop it low like that, then you have to rip it back. See how you had to jump it back up in the air? Yeah. You want to stop it in fishing position. All right. Back to the old shallow to deep with a dry fly. Little cicada. Oh, that didn't take long. Well, missed him. <laughs> well, didn't miss him, I guess, lost him. But throw the cicada in here first. And we'll come back with the nymph. Oh, boy, I'm not keeping those fish on the dry fly pegged. I made two casts and uh, hooked and lost <laughs> two fish here on the, the cicada dry. Let's see if there's anybody else. There we go. <laughs> uh, maybe I can land this one, maybe I can't. We'll see. That fish was almost in the exact same spot as the last one that ate, so I would be surprised if it was the same fish. <laughs> but maybe it was so excited by that cicada it was willing to eat the steel twice. I doubt it though. See you later, brown trout. <laughs> oh, that cicada was dragging pretty badly, but uh, this brown trout didn't care. Well, some good old high desert cicada fishing.
That actually wasn't that bad. That was like a, that was a squash like flavor. That was a lot more flavorful than I thought that was going to be. TBH. I feel like I've got a lot more empathy for the fish now, knowing what that, what that's like. In here, I did see one fish rise, actually right in front of where Brad is standing with the camera. So that soft side might have a fish or two interested. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> Yep, that fish was right on the bank. Um, there aren't any real big boulders breaking up the current in the middle of the run. So it may just be that there's not enough cushion for the fish. Oh, right on the bank and got eaten right away. So they're definitely not in the main flow in this spot. Those softer edges seem to be where the brown trout are holding. This one took, I put a little micro streamer on the point fly to have a little extra weight to get down on that last one. And that's what that fish took. Mmm, bone marrow. All right, pitcher, come on. We're waiting for the boys. Might as well play some bone cricket. What? <laughs> oh! <laughs> one more, one more. Whoa! I don't know how cricket is scored, but I think I just did something good. <laughs> hmm, I wonder where his lanyard was. <laughs> All right, well. Missed that fish on the first cast. In this spot anyway. We've uh, just returned from lunch after batting around a few sticks with assorted mammalian bones. And uh, so far what we've seen, the fish do like big drives today, but they're also not in some of the most obvious runs in A-water that you would think would definitely hold fish. There we go. They, uh, they seem to be closer to big rocks and structure and bank. And I'm in a side channel here. Nice side channel by that rock. That's the second fish I've had to eat out of here. And you know, nice deep pocket. It's got better surface currents that are hiding the fish, um, but it's not too fast. So the lazy brown trout can get in there. Got a nice looking run here. The funny thing is, we haven't really found many fish in water like this yet. But, I just have to try it. Not produce much brown trout wise. They've been hiding on banks and structure and, oh! <laughs> well, that's what I get for saying that. I just about gave up on that drift and a brown trout came and ate it right toward the end. So, I missed him on the dry fly, but I didn't miss that one. Oh, he did get off though. <laughs> All right, well, I just hooked and lost that fish to the net and before that I had a fish take my dry fly that I missed. So I'm running back through that same area with the nymph just to see if that first fish is still one to eat because if he's not spooked I might be able to get him. 
But these are wild brown trout, and even though they aren't pressured, they're still kind of cagey. And often it's one and done. There we go. I think that's that same fish that was right where I missed that one on the cicada. Woo, jumper. Took the blowtorch. Which is funny because I had not gotten anything on that blowtorch for a bit. And uh, then I pulled it up and saw that I had that case caddis on it. Took it off, and like one or two casts later, that fish ate. Thanks for watching this tactical fly fisher video, everybody. We uh, had a fun day exploring this canyon. Uh, I can't say that the fishing was necessarily quite as <laughs> hot as we were hoping for. The, uh, with those wildflowers, though. With the wildflowers. <laughs> that was out of the park. Yeah, no, it, it was a great day uh, exploring a, a cool part of the world that I've wanted to get to for a long time, but haven't. And yeah. uh, we did see some quite a few wild trout who took big phone dry flies, so that doesn't... <laughs> can't complain. Yeah, no. You can't no. complain about that. <laughs> if you do, then... Maybe you don't deserve to be a fly fisherman. Right there. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> Even if they're only this big. But it was, it was a fun day. We hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll, we're looking forward to exploring some more. And maybe it'll give you some motivation to uh, go explore some new water of your own. Because as we were talking about today, you never know if you don't go. Yep. Uh, and that's, how, that's half the fun of finding out. Uh, so give us a like on the video subscribe to the channel, and then come on over to tacticalflyfisher.com and these fine gentlemen right here and I <laughs> will help you out with whatever you need to uh, tie your own flies or buy some flies or head out on the water with some new gear. Thanks for watching. I just ripped my GoPro off, GoPro off my head into the water. <laughs> oh, what a cluster that was. <laughs>